Chris Strasser is one of the best offensive line coaches in the NFL, and it's good he's with the Colts. We talked to him about that left tackle position, what they're looking for, and where Bernard Ryman is, where Matt Pryor is, and how that position group is kind of fitting together. The decision, or Matt's decision to do the boxing, is that something you two talked about, or did he Not choose one bit. to do that? No. No, I mean, I got great faith in these guys in the offseason, you know, making good decisions and doing smart things. And he really worked out with a group of guys between, you know, Quentin and Will Fries and Danny Pinter. That those guys had a great plan with what they did. Um, he didn't mention he did mention the boxing thing to me, but he didn't ask me if he could do it. I mean, I was totally good knowing that he's going to do the right things to, um, to get himself ready to play. Normally with left tackles, they're high draft picks. They're, you know, well-paid guys. What's been your experience in finding a guy that can play left tackle kind of the way that you found him for the man? I haven't had a lot of experience with it. You know, when I was in Denver, we you know we drafted Bowles in the first round. He was our left tackle for two years. And then when I got here, we had Anthony, who obviously was a nine or ten year left tackle here, high draft pick, and then Eric Fisher, the first pick of the draft. So really, to be honest with you, in the NFL, Matt's the first guy that I've coached that was not, I would say, a high profile guy in terms of the draft. You, you Charles Leno Jr. at Boise State, though. Right, yes. guys, a seventh round pick who's made a pretty good career. Yeah, college guys. I yeah. mean, she, we had, with, with the exception of Clady and Boise, we had really nobody that I would consider a high draft pick in that tackle. Right. But a bunch of guys who were good players. Was it just development that he needed a chance? I think it's a combination of all those things. You know, I mean, you look at where he came from in um, Philly. He's behind for most of his career there. Jason Peters mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, blanking on their, their elite right tackle, Lane like, Johnson. Uh, yeah, Lane Johnson, and so yeah, that's hard to crack the lineup there. Yeah. What have you seen out of uh, Ramen so far? Um, I think super I athletic. Right. Yeah, Ryman. <laughs> Ryman. Yeah, thank you. super athletic, and you know, which is kind of what we had hoped for and anticipated. Very coachable. He, he's a ways away in terms of you know really being at the level we need him to fundamentally with the technique stuff, but he makes progress. Um, but just his athleticism, is, I would say, is, is fairly unique. Is it just a matter of hands? Is that what he needs no. to work on, hand placement and no, punch and stuff? Just, yeah, I mean, there's just so many stinking details that go into playing the offensive line at this level. There's there's really almost no way you could come in here and not say what I just said right now, be a guy that has, you know, just a ways away detail-wise. And so, you know, it's, it's assignment stuff, it's footwork stuff, it's hands, it's a combination of all that stuff. You know, we talk about how Gilmore is really good for Pierce. Is uh, Ngakwe really good for, for Ryman? Absolutely, yes, and, and for Pryor, and for the whole group for that matter, you know, just to have those guys. And then Quiddy being in his second year, but certainly with, with Ngakwe, you know, being an elite pass rusher in this league for a long time, it only makes our guys better at tackle. Chris, do you, um, do you temper your evaluations until they put the pads on, especially in your position? Well, I think you, you've got to figure out what to evaluate at this point. And so you're not evaluating guys in terms of their finish, you know, necessarily their physicality, but there's still a lot to evaluate. And so for us having to go, not having to, but having gone the whole off season, basically doing some version of walkthrough, that's really hard to evaluate. So we had five days here before we really got going or whatever, it's been four days that there's been some good stuff to evaluate. But yes, yes, and assignment and all that. Tempered though, yes. With, uh, I saw Will getting some work in at center. I know he worked out with Owen Cruz this off season. We've got Kevin Y here on staff. What have you seen out of him in terms of his potential to be able to play that position? Yeah, he's got great position flex. The nice thing is we, he's one of those guys that you know really could plug and play at five spots. And that doesn't mean he would be he, an elite player at five spots, mm -hmm. but he could go in there and do just he's got the body type to do that. So just center, he's got great leadership skills. He's a very smart player. You know, he plays with good leverage and you know a lot of those things that um, you know probably uh, made Olin and you know Kevin such great players. He's got a few of those qualities. When you you have a player like that who you know in the off season he goes and he trains with a guy like Olin Crooks and comes back into your building. What do you notice about just the maybe the work ethic or the the drive or desire to hey I want to go seek out these guys? The I guess what I would say was you know it, it, it less so a guy like Olin but more specifically Olin. Uh -huh. You know Olin is a tremendous guy for those guys because Olin is is a rare. Um, he was a rare football player. Like, you know, he's a hard ass. He's an old school hard ass. And so those guys do nothing but listen to what he says. And his experience has been great. And so I think between Quentin and Danny and, um, and you know, Will all going up there and seeing him at one point or another, they've all benefited. How have players responded to having a guy like Kevin Mawai on the staff coaching them? 
a former player not that long ago. I think really well. I mean, I certainly they got tremendous respect for a guy that played 16 years in the NFL and is in the Hall of Fame, so it's hard for them not to, you know, have a lot of respect for that. And they don't look at me and see that, so, um, <laughs> you know, I think they I think they appreciate that. But I just think Kevin also, he's got such a good, you know, just such good mojo about him. I think the guys really like to listen to what he has to say. And, um, you know, he's a good storyteller, so guys like to hear the stories he tells about some of the stuff he did in the NFL, so I think they responded really well. And he's a Players Association guy, too. I Absolutely. Think, right? I don't know that he, he brags about that one quite as much. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. All right. That's Chris Strasser, offensive line coach of the Colts. Those guys, they're going to have to protect Matt Ryan. When Matt Ryan is sacked 40 or more times, his teams do not make the playoffs almost ever. Five of the six years he was sacked 40 times with the Falcons, Falcons didn't make the playoffs. you got to keep Matt Ryan upright for this offense to go.